finally, we have some news on what hard drives are new for 2016. This is something you've all been looking forward to. We have Sam from Seagate Australia is going to fill us in on what's coming this year. Hi, Dom. Yeah, so what we've got, what's new, um, we have, if we look at the um, notebook range of drives or um, mobile range of drives, we do have um, a drive what's known as Seagate's laptop ultra thin drive. 500 gigabyte in a five millimeter slot. So this could be um, something that's a, a mobile device, such as a, a, a tablet type of drive um, or, or anything that requires um, extreme lightweight um, and the thinness of a five millimeter profile. So we've had, what sizes have we had before? Okay, so um, for Previously, for the the ultra thin was a 320 gig. Now it's in the 500 500 gigabyte drive. We also um, and physical sizes as well. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so we've gone from what 15, 12, 9, 7, now up to five, are we? Okay. So for the thickness, for the thickness of the drive, yes. So um, we've gone from 15 in two and a half inch technology from the very beginning days. We've gone from 15 millimeter to uh, yeah, 12 millimeter, nine millimeter, seven millimeter, and this one here is five millimeter in thickness. And who are using these type of drives? Because in the laptop we have a little bit of space. Yes. I mean, we have more space than you know that. So, so, so this this type of device would go into something like an ultrabook, something very slim, something that you really um, thinness is what that what matters. So yeah, ultrabook type scenario um, is where. You'd, you'd be finding this this product found for, in a 500 okay. capacity. So going to the next thickness of um, of um, hard drive is the seven millimeter. Seagate's excited to announce for 2016 that we now have the seven millimeter thin drive, which is per perfect for laptop upgrades in one and two terabyte. That's the highest capacity uh, notebook drive that you can get with a seven, seven millimeter form factor. So you'd find that most notebooks today probably only have the provision for a seven millimeter slot. Um, previously you could not put two terabytes, now you can. So Seagate with their one and two terabytes, seven millimeter thick drive. So I have, we have tested uh, from Seagate before a four terabyte and two terabyte solution, but those were 9.5 millimeter, were they? Yes. Yeah, so, so this is, this is you've basically shrunk and this is the new, new tech that's, offering. That's correct. Previously the uh, two terabyte was the, um, was a 9.5 yeah. millimeter. So we also have in 15 millimeter, which I don't have here to show you, we do have a 15 millimeter drive, which uh, available in three and four terabyte. 15 millimeter drive um, is, a, is a little thick for uh, a notebook scenario, but we're seeing all in one PCs now um, where they have a, a slot um, and you need that, that desktop style capacity in an all in one PC, but it's a two and a half inch slot. 15 millimeter drive. So Seagate also have the highest capacity two and a half inch drive uh, for let's say all in one PC or small form factor PC. Sam, we wouldn't use that in a server, would we? So servers that take 2.5 drives, those are not really the right scenario for that sort of thing, is it? No, uh, they're designed for uh, a, a consumer workload, a desktop type, desktop or laptop type workload, whereas in an enterprise, uh, the drives are designed more for high IOPS per second from um, for high IOPS per second, 24 by 7 um, environments where there's um, a lot of, let's say, transaction, transactional data occurring and, um, yeah. So, Sam, we've looked at two different form factors of laptop drives. Is there anything else coming from the laptop sector this year? Yeah, so we also have um, the solid-state hybrid drive where we mix the, um, the conventional drive and we put some solid-state onto that same drive so you can get the best of both worlds. You can get the capacity and you can get some solid-state performance out of the drive uh, at a lower cost. So we have that in a one terabyte um, capacity, but like previously we have that with eight gigabytes of flash built in we now have it um for 2016 um the one terabyte drive 
with 32 gig of flash. So yeah, you can load all your, um, your games um, a, lot, a lot faster. The load time can be a lot faster. You can keep all those um, games um, installed on, your, on your, your disc because you now have, um, you've got one terabytes to play with. Well, we're, one of the main reasons we're here today, we're excited to see a new 8 terabyte flagship and what's I think what's globally new is to get today announcing 10 terabyte and that's what we're finally waiting for, especially with news recently of WD launching their 10 terabyte. So one of the reasons here we're talking with Sam, we're, here, we're excited to hear about what's new on 8 terabyte and 10 terabyte. Okay, so uh, what's new with 8 terabyte? Last year we announced our archive drive. It was an 8 terabyte drive. And using the SMR recording method, which is shingled uh, magnetic recording, this year we're announcing that our desktop three and a half inch, our NAS three and a half inch, our um, enterprise NAS, and our enterprise capacity drives have increased from six terabyte capacity to eight terabyte using the standard conventional recording methods. So, yep, that's a, an increase from six to eight terabytes for 2016 um, along those three and a half inch platform drives. Um, as you mentioned, 10 terabyte, Seagate has announced a, a helium drive, um, and that is um, in 10 terabytes capacity. Um, and we're excited that to, to, to announce that. Um, it has slightly, about 5% more performance over the enterprise capacity, eight terabytes. So we're using the helium technology, we've got a little bit more performance for this 10 terabyte. What makes your helium drive different to the competitor in a nutshell? Okay, so one of the um, one of the concerns for most consumers is because it's a sealed drive using helium is the outgassing of the helium over long periods of time. With our new um, with our new newly announced helium drive, we're using a forged base base deck. So the aluminium base deck of the um, drive just is actually, to show our users what a base deck is. So we've got some samples yeah. here. So that's the base deck of the drive. Um, Here's another a different one. So this is the basic of a drive. Um, so what we do, it's it's an aluminium and it's forged. So forging means that it's put basically into a mould and a heavy weight is, is stamped on top to get all the thickness uniform and to stop any porosity over time for that helium to escape. We also have the interconnect between between the inside of the drive and the outside PCB. We have a pattern interconnect there to ensure that um, over time there'll be no leaks from the inside of the, the drive to the outside world without. So you. just to give our users an example, we brought our, our older drive with us today. This is 22 years old and just side by side we can see the difference between the base deck and the circuit board that fingers have changed significantly. Yeah, as you can see it's all surface mount technology now as opposed to this very old drive. Um, and far fewer components, a lot more is integrated, all the silicon's integrated into, you know, um, single integrated circuits. So basically the main main points of interest, basically we're, we're concerned about how long the drive is robust for in terms of, because you're talking about gas escaping, and that is one of the main concerns about bringing helium drives to market. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so Seagate's done um, everything that it could see to be able to move forward the um, helium technology to um, ensure that their design is superior to um, ensure, obviously, greater life and greater reliability of the products. So how would you see comparing, so we've got which one's the eight terabyte? So this is the eight terabyte flagship model in terms of standard SATA drives. How would you see, compare this one to the 10 terabyte? Would a user use them complementary or is one specifically used and no one use it for a different purpose? Well, um, the 10 terabyte helium drive, um, you you could use it you could use it in your wherever you you may but it it's specifically designed around a high capacity high performance for ten terabyte it uses low power because um, we we foresee that it'll be used a lot in let's say a cloud environment being a helium technology the drives are act physically lighter so the drive is is a lot lighter so it helps with data centers where they have false floors in the air conditioned um, uh, data room, data centers, where the air conditioning comes out of the floor, and it 
there's challenges with the actual weight on top of this floor. So when you're talking about hundreds of drives side by side um, and something like about a 33% um, weight reduction in drive, you know, eight terabytes is quite, quite heavy. Um, when you're talking about a 10 terabyte with helium being 33% lighter, well, that's significant weight saving. Something you may not consider as important for something at home, but for data center, absolutely. And data centers are the ones that are, you know, pushing the boundaries and requesting the high capacity. So today we're, we're looking at the new 10 terabyte model and we have eight terabyte additions to other 3.5 inch Seagate drive models. Yes, that's okay. correct. And can you, um, obviously we're only talking about an enterprise, this is called an enterprise capacity version six, I believe. It's in the, yep. the, the 10 terabyte model of helium. So what's Seagate calling the te helium technology? Because your competitor has a certain trade name for it. Does Seagate have a trade name for the helium? Yeah, we, we, we call the, um, the helium, it, it, it carries on from the eight terabyte model. So we call it enterprise capacity. So we have enterprise capacity eight terabyte that's currently using the conventional recording and enterprise capacity 10 terabyte, and that is the helium. So, so you're there's just no calling special... it a helium drive because your competitor is calling helio seal. Yeah, so we, we, we don't, we, yeah. there's no special branding to uh, or, or name such as helium. It's simply known as enterprise capacity 10 terabyte. So at the moment, because when you have an enterprise drive, I, I realize you can't talk about unannounced products, but would it be, would it be, um, we, are we likely going to see this product cascade into different segments of Seagate drive that are more applicable to consumer and SMB? So say, for example, a 10 terabyte helium drive that is meant for end user computer or for a Soho or NAS or something like that. Or is at the moment Seagate is only looking at this technology in the enterprise space and we have to wait and see if it is going to translate to consumer because your competitor has launched a range of helium. Yeah, well, the, the, with the helium, Technology that allows us to gain a higher aerial density. So the helium product is predominantly going to be seen where you require the higher aerial density. But using helium technology comes additional cost. So where conventional recording can be improved in aerial density, we're going to find that you're still going to have conventional recording drives um, in 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 NAS and desktop scenarios purely based on that. The capacity is there for those consumers at the right cost. But where you re you need to be at the upper limits of capacity, then yes, helium does look like it, it will play its right. significant Thank you very much, Sam, for introducing us to, well, from your company, the first 10 terabyte drive. Thank you.